Hello everyone, so today we're going to get the latest update of WAN 2.2 Animate running natively in ComfyUI. As I've talked about before, WAN 2.2 Animate uses the WAN video wrapper to run, and I covered that in a previous video. So let's skip the fluff and jump right in. If you want to know what this model is all about, just check out that earlier video. In this blog post, you'll see the updated ComfyUI workflow featuring WAN 2.2 Animate, as well as Quen Image Edit with new version 2509. That's a pretty cool image gen and image editing model. We'll check it out in a future video. But for now, let's get back to WAN 2.2 Animate. The workflow is available for download, and it basically does the same things you'd see in the WAN video wrapper. Using WAN 2.2 Animate, you can take a reference image, like this guy here, and swap it into footage of another person, replacing them while keeping the original motion. It also handles pose transfer, just like I mentioned before. You don't need to remove the video background or manually create a character mask. Just apply your reference image and it'll follow the pose and motion from the source video. Here are a few more examples. You can see that everything runs directly in Comfy UI and is totally capable of generating animations like this. Once you download the workflow and load it into Comfy UI, just drag and drop it into the interface, it'll pop up with everything already set up using native nodes. You'll see model loaders, loaders, VAE, and even a Vision C LIP loader for the image. Oh, and by the way, you might have noticed that the default Comfy UI template has changed a bit. They're now using get and set nodes from the KJ nodes pack. Before, everything was just spaghetti wires flying everywhere, but now it's a lot tidier. Anyway, let's go to step three and step four here. Load your image and load your video for pose reference. And if you prefer to keep the original video background, you can do that too. Just use the load video node. A quick note here. When you download the default workflow from the blog post, you'll see some Quan image PNG files. I'm assuming the Comfy UI team or whoever created this workflow used Quan image edit probably with ControlNet, to generate a reference image that closely matches the pose in the video. And yeah, you can totally do that yourself too. I'll try it out in an upcoming example. As you can see, they're using the same method. Creating a mask for the character and handling the background across the whole video. They're also using the point editor here, which is pretty cool visually, but you've got to be careful with it. With the point editor, you have to run it once to get the first frame, then manually place those green dots in the right spots on the character. After that, you run the whole process again to actually generate the output. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of the point editor. If you've watched my previous videos, you know, I usually just hit process and let the whole workflow run automatically in one go, no manual tweaking. So anyway, this is just the default example workflow they provided. You can use it as a reference for handling character masks and background videos. It works the same way as the one video wrapper examples. Just like this one, I've slightly modified. You'll see the same grow mask setup and everything connected the same way. Nothing too crazy here. They also expand the mask. If you want more space around your character, you should do that instead of leaving just a tiny margin. It creates a clean mask and fills the masked region with black using this node. They used a lot of get and set nodes in this workflow but not for the background video or character mask sections. Those are still connected with spaghetti wires. I'm not trying to be picky, but if you've already started cleaning things up, why not finish the job? Now, let's talk about the sampler. For background video and character mask inputs, they've added a new node, One Animate to Video. It's part of the newer comfy UI versions. It works just like a normal sampler. You've got your prompts, clip vision output, and so on. You connect the clip vision output, your reference image, face video, and pose video, all coming from the load video group. By default, they're using two DW pose estimators, one for the face and one for the body pose. That means you're doubling your resource usage, which feels inefficient to me. But in my opinion, running DW pose twice like this is overkill. Moving on to background and character handling. If you're doing character swapping on an existing video, you'll connect those inputs. Otherwise, just disconnect the background video and character mask inputs and you'll get pure pose transfer. Your reference image will mimic the motion from the source video. If you do connect the background and mask, 
you'll get results like this, where the penguin is chasing someone, but now it's your character doing the motion instead. Now, switching over to Comfy UI itself, this setup uses almost the exact same inputs as the WAN video wrapper. But there's one thing the WAN video wrapper has that this embedded version doesn't. Video frame offset and continue motion max frame. These two features are new and super useful for generating longer videos with continuous motion. Real talk, most people have limited VRAM and memory, so even generating a one minute video can be tough. But here's how it actually works. You can chain batches together. For example, if your model can handle 77 frames, or maybe 81, that's another common option with one animate, you process that batch, then pass the video frame offset and trimmed latency to the next sampler group to continue generation. So when you input those values, they go into the case sampler, which processes everything normally, like six steps for Light X2V, since we're using the Light X2V image to video LoRa here. And speaking of LoRa's, this one helps a little, not a ton, but a bit, with color consistency between batches. Sometimes you get weird color shifts or model artifacts from frame to frame, and this LoRa helps keep your character's colors matching the background video. Next up is the image from batch node. Pay attention here. There's kind of a logical error in the default workflow. It's set to 4096 frames by default, but that number should actually match your output video length. If you're generating 77 frames, you shouldn't leave it at 4096. The smarter way? Use a counter. The easiest method in Comfy UI is to use an image count node, like this one from the Video Helper Suite. Just connect your image batch to it, and it'll give you the exact frame count. No more guessing. Even if you set 77 frames, the actual output might vary slightly, so letting the computer count for you is way more accurate. Now, about the original FPS, it's disconnected from the Create Video node by default. You can either use the video's original FPS or stick with 16 FPS, which is what the model was trained on. There's also this Bypass node group for extended videos. Basically, to make longer videos, you're supposed to copy and paste this group multiple times, update the output of each image from batch node, and link the frame offset to the next one animate to video node. The explanation here is a bit light, honestly. The first time I saw this, I was confused. What it really means is, the video frame offset from the first batch connects only to the video frame offset input of the next one animate to video node, not to any other parameter. It's like telling the AI, hey, we've already processed 77 frames, now continue from frame 78. If you chain multiple batches together, say, like meatballs on a stick, or fish balls if you're from Asia, the offset acts as a counter so the AI knows where to pick up. Next is the Trim Image node connected to Image from Batch. Now, don't be fooled by the name, it's not actually an image. If you click into it, you'll see the output is an integer. It tells the AI how many frames to trim from the start of the batch to avoid duplicates when continuing motion. For example, if you set Continue Motion Max Frames to 5, this node will output the number 5 meaning the next batch used the five frames to maintain smooth motion. This info gets passed to the image from batch node to trim those frames out. It's very similar to what I used in my one video vase long length workflow, check my previous videos, using start end frames and looping. This new node is actually pretty smart. It integrates both the offset and the trim count, plus there's a trim latent node for trimming latents, just like in one video face. You might want to cut off the first few frames in latent space too, depending on your needs. Overall, this workflow works, but it needs some tweaks to be truly efficient. For starters, that 4096 frame default? Ridiculous. Most consumer PCs can't handle that in one batch. You should base that number on your actual output frame count and use a counter node to be safe. For my test, I'll bypass the extended group and just run one batch to see how it looks. I've got a reference image and a demo video, but the video's too large, so I'll drag it down below the workflow. Since we're only using 77 frames, I don't need to process the full 19 seconds through DW pose. Now, here's a problem with this workflow. The default load video node doesn't let you choose how many frames to load. 
I prefer using the Load Video node from the VHS Custom Nodes. It's way more customizable and gives you better control. Honestly, it's a much better solution. I'll also connect the audio and original FPS using VHS Loaded Info instead of the native node. This way, I can specify exactly how many frames to process for DW Pose. If you've used ControlNet before, you know DW Pose or Open Pose is painfully slow. It drips out frames one by one like a leaky faucet. Compare that to depth maps or line art, which process the whole batch almost instantly. So having two DW Pose nodes, one for body's hands and one just for the face, is super inefficient. It doubles your memory usage and processing time. Here's what I recommend. Use just one DW pose. For example, if you're doing 81 frames, run it once, then extract facial motion from the same pose data. I'll show you my optimized version later. It cuts the time way down. Before running, double check your models. I had to reselect all of them. Make sure you're using the Light X2 V image to video LoRa, not the text to video one. Also, load the Animate Relight LoRa. It's available for download, and the template includes links and the UMT for the text clip encoder. I've got FP16 enabled, and everything else looks good. Let's use this image as our character and see if it can dance along with the motion from the reference video. Now, about the point editor efficiency, or lack thereof. You have to wait for the first frame to appear, and the segmentation loads automatically, but it's not great. You have to manually stop Comfy UI, then place green dots all over the character, arms, hands, body, everywhere you want to cover. One dot isn't enough, you'll also see this in the bypass group. Once the mask preview shows the character cleanly cut out against a black background, you're good to go for sampling. Honestly, I'm just not a fan of the point editor. It doesn't feel like using AI, it feels like manual rotoscoping, the kind arty animators or graphics designers might prefer see in UI. And sure, if you want visual feedback, go for it. But for me, I'd rather use automated segmentation. And yep, there's DW Pose crawling along frame by frame. I didn't speed this up, this is real time. Compare that to depth maps, which blast through a batch in seconds. Later, I'll show you my optimized workflow that avoids running two DW Poses. All right, here's the output. The character's pose mimics the reference video pretty well. You can see the hat moving left and right just like in the original. That's the default workflow doing its thing. If you wanted chain batches like meatball skewers, you'd connect them like this. But my preferred method? Use a for loop. That way, you don't have to deal with spaghetti wiring. Since WAN 2.2 Animate is really meant for single character motion like a short dance clip or a quick action scene, there's usually no need to swap LoRa's mid-video. Some folks ask about loading different LoRa's in different node groups, but for a 77 frame clip, it's overkill. In my modified workflow, I only use one DW pose. I borrowed the one video wrapper's trick. Extract face key points from the pose, then use image crop by mask and resize to isolate the face region. That's more than enough for lip sync or facial expressions. No need for a second DW pose eating up time and memory. Imagine processing 700 frames, or even 1,400 frames, with two DW poses, you'd be waiting forever. My method? One DW pose, extract face key points, crop the face video. Done. You'll also notice the trim image counter. It starts at zero for the first batch, then shows 77 for the next, since we processed 77 frames. That offset feeds into the for loop, which handles the rest, just like my one video vase long length workflow. Zooming out, you can see the offset accumulates 77, then 154, then 231, and so on. It's a clean counter system. And because I set continue motion max frames to 5, the trim image node outputs 5, so we know how many frames to cut from each new batch. I also fix that weird 4096 frame default in image from batch. Instead, I wired it to an actual image counter so it shows the real number of generated frames. Way clearer, especially for beginners. To handle a 700 frame video, I calculate the loop count like this. That tells the for loop how many iterations it needs. In this case, 
It took eight loops plus the initial batch, 9K sampler runs total, to finish the whole thing. Compare that to the example workflow's extension method, where you manually copy-paste node groups over and over. My loop is cleaner, simpler, and does the same job. All right, let's process this and see the result. This is a 24-second video. The reference has a mirror in the back with another dancer, but we're focusing on the main character. And yep, it nails the dance routine. Now I'll try it with a different reference video and character image. Let's see how it turns out. Since WAN 2.2 Animate supports long videos, why limit yourself to 2-4 to four seconds? Use the full capability. Just remember, DW Pose is the bottleneck. It's slow, no way around it. So skip the double DW Pose setup. One is enough, especially when you're cropping the face region from the same pose data. Next up, masking and character isolation. I'm using Dino SAM segmentation, way more convenient here. WAN 2.2 Animate works best with a single character, so just type a prompt like dancer or dog, cat, boy, etc., and it auto masks that subject. No more clicking run, waiting for the first frame, placing dots, and running again. Just one click, and it handles the mask and background. That's perfect for long videos. You start it, walk away, grab coffee, and come back later. No babysitting required. Sure, the point editor is great if you need to mask multiple people precisely. Green dots on subjects, red dots for exclusion. But for one animate, you're usually working with one character, so Dino Sam is faster and easier. Now back to the grind. DW Pose is still dripping through 700 frames. Trust me, that's the slowest part. The actual sampling, way faster. I'll come back once it's done. For this next test, I'll try 300 frames in portrait mode, 480 by 832. Watch DW pose crawl frame by frame. Yep, that's the waiting time suck. I messed up the dimensions once, used 640 by 640 by default, and it cut off the hat. But even then, the grow mask and background removal worked fine. Dino Sam handled the character isolation perfectly. And if you're only doing pose transfer, no background replacement, just disable this whole group, dim it out, and it won't pass data to the character mask or background inputs. First batch done, correct dimensions this time. Now it's looping through the next batches. You can see the progress counter ticking up. Three loops in, and it's flying. The DW pose took like 10 minutes, but the sampling, all sampling group, just a few minutes for 300 plus frames. And here's the result. 9 seconds at 30 FPS. The character looks good. Some shadow artifacts from the mask, but overall it mimics the reference motion nicely. Those subtle shadows actually make it look more realistic than older AI video tools. This is perfect for single character motion transfer. And with frame offset built right into WAN animate to video, long videos are totally doable. I think the Comfy UI team realized that nobody wants just three second clips anymore. Especially, we are doing video to video motion control with AI. Compared to WAN 2.1 Vase or 2.2 Fun Vase, this animate version is more like the old Animate Anything framework, pose driven animation from a single image. Personally, I like to use Vase more. Mimic Motion did something similar too. The core idea hasn't changed, but the quality, way better now, thanks to Diffusion Transformers. And that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. See ya.